Baltimore, mm. bury me with my golden arm. <laughs> Your golden cuff. My you know golden what they say. cuff. You know, we're well past cuffing season, and yet still. Yeah. This this lad just will not leave me alone. Yeah. Just on God. my ass. If you're well, on your wrist. On my wrist, chatting away. Um, we are, of course, playing Forspoken, Square Enix, Lumina Studios. Um, they've done it again. They've done it again. <laughs> uh, they're back, and that tech demo from many years ago is now a full game. And what a game it is, Lucy James. It's an interesting one. Mm. Um, the conversation around it. So we're coming to this a bit late just because, you know, for various reasons. Um, but um, the conversation on this one has changed quite significantly. Um, Given its true name, Tam, Discourse. The, the, discourse, the word is Discourse. And the that's discourse all that has around been this, this game has game. been borderline insufferable. Um, uh, and uh, various perspectives have been uh, expressed. So a lot of it has been fixated on the writing because there well, are clips. <laughs> yeah, the, the, there are clips out there of, of people like uh, putting out like one or two minute scenes and some people are like, look at this cringe. Um, and other people being like, this is perfectly fine. This is the kind of shit that you love when you're watching a Marvel movie or playing a Borderlands game. And you know what? That's kind of fair. But, sadly, like, I take no pleasure in saying the writing isn't good. Like, yeah. the best part of this game is the world. Stay frosty. Um, there's an oh, interesting... They've done, a, they've done a real bloody destiny, by the way, and all of the cool stuff is, uh... Chucked in. Uh, if you hit, if you can, you open up your uh, your archive. Is that what it's called? Yeah. yeah. There's all the cool stuff. To all read the good about. shit. All the good shit is here. So if you are a fan of the Mass Effect Codexes, let me tell you, this is where You're you want to hang time. out. You're in for a great time. Nothing about a Reaper indoctrination in here, sadly. Maybe but we like, haven't yeah. got to that bit yet. Yeah. So this is where all the good stuff is. Um, Tantus indoctrination is an insidious, insidious means, means of corrupting uh, Frey's <laughs> mind. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like, for those who need a crash course, this game is Alice in Wonderland. It's an isekai, which if you're not sure what an isekai is, it's a it's a Alice genre <laughs> of of anime that it, or manga that is effectively Alice in Wonderland. You might have seen it in something like Sword Art Online, which has been very popular. It's where a person from a the normal world that you probably know of so under some mysterious magical circumstances like goes from their rough life falls through some magical hole of some sort appears in a fantasy land where suddenly they're very capable and very uh, very um, suited important. to helping that world out yeah. Uh, yeah and important and isekais are fantastic they can be a lot of fun mm. um, and uh, sadly this isn't um, it yeah, kind of if you if you I think the the writers are so concerned that you didn't grasp that it was going to be an isekai this. Alice in Wonderland type thing because mm. just before Frey who is the character that you play as uh, arrives in this land Athia she fucking picks up a copy of Alice in Wonderland and oh, yeah. comments on how much she would love Damn. to go to a different world yeah so and um, then you, there you have on it. the nose so like the, yeah like the point of that is like the world is great like I, I think there's yeah. a lot of potential there it's the moment to moment story that feels like very very lacking and obviously the dialogue is the thing that a lot of people are gonna talk or have been fixated on there is a kind of weird weirdness to it where Somehow Frey is like she speaks like someone would speak that we know like from our world, but she does it too much You know what the I mean? Thing, she just will me, not stop so the thing that gets me about it and um, Is that And obviously luminous Square Enix Final Fantasy 15 and there are, it's mm. it's weird that you can see the the Final Fantasy 15 DNA in this DNA, yeah. But the difference between that game and something like Hi-Fi Rush, um, which as a recording came out yesterday, um, is that there is an earnestness to Final mm -hmm. Fantasy that is not present yeah. here. There is a like a, a tongue-in-cheek wink when it comes to Hi-Fi Rush, and that is so not present here. Frey's entire character is so determined to be like, 
Well, that just happened. That's not what I'm supposed to do. I just want to go home. Like, it yeah, seems she's like it, it hates... It, it's at odds with itself. Yeah. And, it, and the thing, the one character that I think really works is Cuff. Because yeah. Cuff is presented as this, like... I mean, to use a Marvel example, and I'm so sorry to do this, but he's very reminiscent of Vision. Yeah, he's he is a hundred percent Vision. One million percent is Vision from like pre MCU. the Jarvis days. Yeah. Um, and I think he works really, really well because he accepts the world for what it is, and it feels like he belongs in it. Whereas Frey is so determined to stick out. And unfortunately, some of the way she does that is by um, performing to live here. the sacred art known People as cringe. Yeah, and it is cringe. People out there have been like, no, it, oh, it's not cringe, you guys don't know. The thing that people need to understand is the clips that you're seeing are very short clips. And in that moment, you might think that's not cringe at all. But the piece of, important piece of context you're missing is it's that for multiple hours endlessly nonstop. And that's when it becomes like a bit much to bear. Um, I don't think it's like awful. Like it's not doesn't make the game unplayable. It's just kind of a constant nuisance. And it's yeah. one of the things that that I feel like is like it's it's one of the things that you put on the pile that makes the the whole experience a bit weirder. Um, that's the thing because it's not off-putting to me like say like Borderlands is, but it is also not endearing yeah, to me in the way that a Final Fantasy is. And for that reason, it is just, like, I don't particularly care about the story. They do a thing at the beginning where they obviously try and hook you in with an emotional uh, thing when she arrives um, into mm. Athia and meets some of the people. Um, and it does not work. It, it does doesn't not really work. work because, at all, be yeah, because Frey as a character is so intent on going back to her shitty life that she's very like closed off to everything mm -hmm. but also at the same time a little girl will be like hello and she'll be like oh my god i love you so much but will yeah. not express it like if something yeah, happens like working. when something happens to people you're like oh i'm surprised that she cares which says a lot about her as a character right and her writing like if i'm surprised that she cares about someone else i'm like oh you didn't ever express any sort of interest. In fact, you actively expressed uh, a desire to be away from the characters, other characters, mm. which is an issue. Um, and like, I think her characterization is not particularly good. Um, I, I also think some of the game certainly struggles with um, voice acting slash directing. Um, there are some scenes in it where I, th I think Frey, for the most part, uh, does the best with what she's been given, but there are some scenes in it where some characters are just chewing the scenery so much, and they just feel so out of place, like they're not part of a conversation, and it's so one-sided, and it just feels so bizarre. Um, yeah. The, the first two hours of the game are just very hands-off. Like, you spend a lot so of time... It's start, start. It's, Oh, so yeah. start, start. You start off and you're in New York, in the weirdest New York. I haven't been to New York that many times, but even I was like, we were I hope like no one. Ago. Yeah, I was like, I hope no one from New York plays this, man, because it seems like I upsetting. Th I think, um, uh, I think Jake Baldino and I think. But even Bacalar was like. Back, back on. No, I think they were like, oh, it's okay, you know, but I think that's just because they're New Yorkers and they like to see me. Yeah, yeah. Well, Jeff said there was one thing that he liked, and it was like some outside seating situation. And I was like, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, really, really stretching. A, a real, uh, really real weird that. stretch there. <laughs> a lot of um, an outdoor seating situation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, it's the, the first two hours are quite dry, and you come to this world, and they're like, oh, we've got this horrible yeah. miasma of something and a dark energy, which frayed caused the break and it's slowly killing us mm -hmm. uh, and it's like encroaching on our territory uh how about we walk around for a bit as a quest yeah Is that, isn't that nice let's do that and you're like there's no sense of peril from anyone everywhere all this the main city that you start in looks just completely barren like there's oh, nothing in there let's let's go let's go to the city because it is uh yeah I wild don't know how quickly. it is it is We'll, we'll do. Let's let, we'll go to see, but let's talk about the gameplay first. Yeah, let's talk about so yeah, like combat fundamentally, wise. combat wise, it is functional yeah. but not satisfying. Whoa. And I think a lot of it comes down to like, especially early on. This is about eight hours in. Um, a lot of it early on is like building this, building your repertoire up. But it's it's so much of it is like not enjoyable to do. 
to do that I, I always struggle to be like here uh, to, to get to a point where I'm like I've got better abilities like yeah, this the stuff, thing is as well is that abilities are not necessarily fun or oh, easy on. to no. swap between and, and that you don't get that fluidity like for example if you wanted to do you know like even if they just had it you know you press L1 in triangle and that's that you press L1 in circle that's that there's no other way you have to like hold R1 or hold L1 and swap your defensive and offensive oh. spells yeah um, and that's just I, like on the fly I don't think like the game doesn't necessarily slow down enough to feel like you're linking them at least when yeah. I was playing you know I assume there are gonna be people who are just like incredible at this game and who will be able to link stuff up way more smoothly than I can and that's all the power to you um, I just found you yeah know, I, some, I, I was, like to pick up and play I was just like nah. I am one of those people who wants to do that, but I just feel not. Like for me, the moment I started playing and I started the, using the basic ability, which is this like kind of semi-automatic hand uh, magic that she fires off, I just found it deeply unsatisfying. Like I couldn't, it didn't feel good. And then I fe you feel like you're shooting like a submachine gun from afar and it just doesn't feel great. Um, and the other thing is like the combat is like actively at odds with the movement so you hit circle and Frey would go into this like parkour mode now that where she likes, I like this is this is great like yeah this I is like one this. of the cool th but like she's also incredibly unwieldy like she's so <laughs> she hard glumps. she she like she's all over the place like this and like when you do that in the middle of combat it like really messes with you because it wants you to lock on and get behind like these enemies for example oh, are, are like they've got shields so you can only shoot them from behind so if i lock on and dash behind i just feel like i get behind and i can't really do anything meaningful sometimes i'll do the dash into them and he and she will jump over and do a cool yeah. flip sometimes she just won't do it where it's like i like, really I like weird. The, um there's a defensive spell where kind of like uh yeah. Oh yeah, there's that one that shoots everyone in the air, but there's another one that's kind of vines, binds, yeah. I think it'll, yeah. And, Tendril, yeah. bind, and these are a few of them that we've unlocked at this stage, but oh. like, these are like fine, like you, you, I can put up a little turret here, um, oh. that will fight for me, um, yeah. which is fine, but the combat doesn't feel, I feel like I'm out of control, I feel like I'm on a horse and the horse is like running wild and I'm desperately I'm trying to get it to go where I want to, to the point where I, I found that I'm gonna just gonna run away from this encounter now because yeah. it's just. I also don't fun. think it would be that un that bad if like if it wasn't scoring you. Yeah. I don't think that's necessary, and I think that kind of speaks no. to a little bit of some of this game where there is a crafting system and there is a magic system and there's a way to improve your spells and there's uh, all the unlockable stuff and it just kind of throws a lot of things to the wall and doesn't necessarily. Yeah. If. It doesn't. I don't know. Like it's less. there, it's fine. The yeah, one it the one that got me though was um you can decorate your nails. Um <laughs> you and that are, gives you Yeah. Yassify you Yassify your character is what's happening. And the first yeah. one you unlock is called Slay. Yeah, it's just And I like, was like, if we're talking about, you know, cringe or whatever, that I'm amazed that one wasn't more present yeah. in the discourse. Because that I saw that and I groaned. So um, like the the actual parkour is fun. Like and you can press circle and every time you hit circle she does she gets like a little boost which is fine yeah. and cool. And there's uh, little diamonds at the bottom left of the screen that show you how many of those little boosts that you can get. These like weird um, energy fountains are basically everywhere around the world and they are effectively a currency you use to unlock upgrades. Yeah. And the fact that they're just everywhere is one it speaks to like an, a desire to make people, you know, parkour in the same way it's like oh we'll, we'll put rings here and get you know characters all and you run through them in that classic mm -hmm. way um, but also it feels like a very ga like gamified to the point where it feels manipulative where I like I see all this and I'm like this is a core part of your game and I, I don't think I like engaging with that um, I find the, the the kind of parkour good but it also incredibly unwieldy as I said to the point where I I found myself doing a lot of really annoying things that I didn't want to do and eventually I realized that I found a way to get it under control oh. and it's like so this is this is her normal run yeah this is her human sprint yeah and then when I hit circle she will launch into her magical parkour but there like if I'm tr if I'm trying to just get up onto the top of this mm -hmm. and I try and do it it's you see that 
Yeah. Like there are times when you need to get up on a small platform and she will just yeet herself across because <laughs> she's always wants to. But what I realized is, yeah, what I realized is if you if you're in this mode and you switch to the human sprint, it cancels it out. Oh. To the point where if I like run up here, I'm going to leap off this and then hit the human sprint in midair. Okay. Oh. <laughs> it, st it stops her flat. Wow, so now, okay. now my now now the way I played this game, or I was playing this game, was to give myself better control. I'm like moving around and mm. using just yeah, yeah. The, this to control myself, so yeah. I can like that's get smart. a better and and looks like that's. I don't think that's how the game was meant to be played. Mm. If it, if if that was meant to be played and it was in a tooltip, maybe I screwed up and I didn't see it. But like I I feel like the fact that I need to come up with this workaround to get like some semblance of control over this so like here I, i'm actually like moving around the environment but that's because like i'm actively stopping her from doing her parkour constantly yeah which is um, like a I, weird I mean thing. another point to to her movement if you go into one of the um you know those little like safe houses those guys oh, yeah. watch the way that she moves when she's in an interior she has like a weightedness and an acceleration when you turn around and it, and this is very annoying at the beginning of the game because you are in a lot of enclosed environments and you are picking up things and looking around and it's and she just feels cumbersome but then when you go outside and you're like doing the sprint thing it's fun but it also kind of reminds me of like do you remember when assassin's creed changed from being like precision parkour to being mm. oh i'm just gonna hold the run button and then yeah whoever is gonna do anything I want. Like, I'm not an yeah. active participant in this. I'm just pushing forward and holding down the run button. And that's the kind of, like, not frustrating because it is fun to sort of scale a huge environment like this and just see the way that she does it, but it's not, as a, as a player, it's not engaging me. I, yeah, I, I don't know what this is. I'm just trying to get back to the castle. Can you, um, is that fast? Oh, no, there is fast travel. Yeah, I was trying to find it, but... I think if you go to one of the little um, houses where the cats are, oh, um, yeah. you Good can point. fast travel to those. Um, yeah, the... Oh, is it, where is it? Is it one of these? Uh, what are they called? Is it a guild? No. It's just... Uh, this is Not the other thing that I really dislike <laughs> about it. It's, it's, it's one of these marker... marker dump games. Look at this. It's oh just so... Um, we, you, like, oh, wait, I, wait, there's a house. A house, 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 house. Go wait, uh, behind, like, directly behind you. Directly down, down, down. Yeah, is that it? Middle no. Pranost, uh Hollow? Oh, it says eliminate the enemy. Northern Refuge, yeah, that was it. Up this again? One? No, the next one. It is the house. That's the one. Okay. Uh, square. Fast right. travel. So, wait, let's find one closer. Why can't I... That's Open a ref. That oh, you refuge. haven't you haven't unlocked that one. You have to go inside yeah. to unlock stuff. Okay, um, let's get out of here and get closer. But yeah, um, where is the exit? Where the hell there is it? Is. There is. Um, oh, I thought you were fast traveling. No, no, no. I need to. I need to be away from the fight. Oh, uh, can't travel while enemies are nearby. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Yeah, I do. I, I mean, like, this is the that best really Sonic the Hedgehog has ever fast. felt, is how I think of it. Like, this is this is how they should, like, Sega should just look at this and be like, huh, that's interesting. Maybe mm. we could just do that. <laughs> um, but, like, the movement feels good when you, when you just want to get across, like, massive areas, massive spaces. But when you're trying to do any sort of, like, um, small movements, it, it kind of like falls apart where it's not enjoyable um, or you have to like fight against it and control it. Luckily the, the little trick that I mentioned earlier takes care of most of it but I don't want to be constantly hitting the thumbstick in um, to stop myself. Uh, the combat stuff like we, we briefly touched on there's there's not much more to it than that. Yeah. Um, that's kind of it. You'll get some more abilities. Oh god am I going to be able to get up here? No. No. This is in? this is the other thing where it's like. Oh, is it not world... on the ground floor? Like I don't other... think so. No. I find I find I think the. You can fast travel to the tavern, right? Let's have a look. 
I also find the construction of the world kind of plain. Mm. Like I, I very easily like. There's nothing sticks out as memorable in my mind. There's a little tick uh, down. Oh, let's go to. We want to be closer, don't we? Oh yeah, there we go. Up. Oh. Can't. No. 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 Just anyway, give me anything. There's a tick there. Fast travel. Yeah, there's nothing really memorable about uh, the world so far. It's like distinct zones, which kind of... Mm. It, the, the thing with this game is it looks really nice. It's got some nice parkour effects. It's shiny, but... I didn't think it looked good in New York at the beginning. Yeah, the New York stuff looks bad. It looked like, and I say this with all the love in the world for Yakuza, but it looked like Yakuza. Yeah, I mean, it looks like an old Yakuza game. Yeah, like an old one. Not like a dragon, but yeah. like... Zero. This is this is the the main city, Janoon. Um, these people Think have nothing interesting to say. None of these people have anything yeah. interesting oh, to say. Oh, did you do the um? There's like the first ever side quest it shows you is a bard. Yeah, who and just sings all you do song. is you talk to him. You don't have to do anything. Yeah, you just stand in and front of him as he sings a song, and then the guard comes up and is like, "Your shit," and then walks off, That's and it. you're like, "All right, cool, yeah. nice." So this is the main city. There's not much to do here, but it's a very plain looking city. I can see what they're going for. So this is like the under city where the This have is the nots, last refuge. Yeah, this is where the have nots live. And then mm. as you go up, um, there is a cat. Oh, there's a cat. Pet. Let's pet the cat. <laughs> Like there a is a, pet, a cat petting mini game, and there yeah, are cats that lead you to some treasures. Yeah. So, you know, game of the year. Yeah, I guess they do have a pretty keen sense of danger, don't they? Um, yeah, so th that was the Undercity, and then you come here and you expect, you know, oh shit, it's gonna be popping off in here. And it's just like, why is this? That pop I mean, there's there's some fucking popping over there. Yeah, there's, there's some popping. The stuff in. is definitely popping in, but it's not popping off, is what we need. And this is, this is it. Like, like, keep in mind that this is one of the last bastions of civilization in this world, and they are actively, like, facing extinction because a strange energy f smoke cloud break thing is slowly encroaching closer and closer to their, to their, um, to their home, and it threatens to destroy them. And there's some magical wizard ladies out there who are kind of pissed about the stuff. But, yeah, but, like, I look around and I'm like, does, is anyone aware that any of this is happening? Does anyone care? Does anyone give a shit? It doesn't seem like it. Like, there's all these massive spaces that I feel like they're made for you to run around in. Like, the, oh this, yeah, you can't use your. But fucking... you can't, you can't use your ability here. This this space looks like it's scaled for a woman who can run super fast. Um, but then you can't do that here. Yeah, because they think like, you're a witch. Yeah. Even and though like, you, 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 this is this is also a point in the story where very early on, a character tells you you can't use your powers. They think you're a witch. They're gonna kill you, and then you uh, leave that situation. You come out here and you use your powers in front of everyone, and they are heralding you as like someone who's gonna save them all. And you still can't use your powers in here. Yeah, everyone's like, oh Mad. yeah, she's amazing. I don't want to play right now. Um, she's amazing, and then everyone, some others are like, don't do that again. Um, but also, like, there's this sense that some people like her and some people don't, which is like, all right. Oh, yeah, there was a really weird bit at the beginning. And and this is, like, this is going to be, you know, if you play it, you'll probably notice these weird inconsistencies where, uh, you know, at the very beginning of the game, I don't necessarily think this is a spoiler because clearly you are not in a jail at this point, but you are jailed and you mm -hmm. uh, leave. And then I walked past a guard, a guard, a city guard. Mm. And at this point, there is no indication that any of the guards are on your side. And she goes, they're looking for you. Yeah. And they're really going to come after you really hard. And I was like, no, not. shouldn't you be doing that? There's that the bit with the pike. <laughs> There's that bit in Thor Ragnarok um, where uh, after the uh, Thor meets Banner and they're just like out in the wild. Yeah. And and um, and and uh, what's the name? The Valkyrie appears and is like, "What are you doing?" He's like, "I'm hiding." And she's like, H "How?" And then he puts hey. the little cloth oh, over his face. Yeah, and he's that's like, basically See? what you do. That's basically what you do in this game. <laughs> and everyone else is like, "Oh, she's gone." 
Wow. There's a bizarre stealth section. There are bizarre stealth sections. Uh, the first one is when you're escaping from that jail and all you do, like genuinely all you do, is you just wait for the NPC to go. Let's and then you follow the them. Mm -hmm. Like, there is no oh, so agency for now? you to find your own path. Sorry. You literally no. just wait with the NPC. And I was like, okay, fine. That's it. And and what? they, like, some of them will stand staring in your direction for yeah. a really long time. Like, an alarmingly long time. I was like, you're just wasting my time. I know what you're doing here. You're just killing the, the hour clock here. Just but I feel, but I, f I really feel as well. There's a disconnect between the writing team and the game, like design level design as well. Because there, like that moment that I was talking about with the weirdness of the guards. There's the bit that was going around on Twitter at the beginning where Frey saved up enough money to go for a new life, and then her oh, apartment yeah. catches fire, and she's looking for a cat, and she just leaves the bag of money on the floor in a flaming apartment. And then the room catches fire completely, so she can't go back for it. And it's like, why would you not pick up the bag? Yeah, she you, like, like steps walk, over the bag. And it doesn't let you as a player pick up the bag. And so there are these weird little moments. But also the, the, the bit that really frustrated me and the bit where I was just like, you know, Ben Affleck with a cigarette uh, was when you come to this city and you have to learn about this world that you've been dropped in, right? You would think you would learn about it by way of an interesting... Um, sorry, you learn about the Tomters, I think it is. Uh, who are these four women? Uh, you would learn about it by going on a quest and maybe, like... You know, un as, as you do the quest, the information unravels about who these people are and what they've done and why they're so bad for the Athia. No, the game makes you go to the archive in the middle of the city and, and like it makes you pick up each book. Frey will say maybe one or two lines about it, but then if you want the actual information, you have to go into the archive in your menu and read it yourself. Yeah. It is baffling. It's wild. And I was just like, that is not good storytelling, lads. It's, and it's lasses. Yeah. It's just, it. I I hate to be the person who speculates, but it's, it just feels like they made a great engine and put out a trailer and people showed a lot of interest in that trailer because of the fidelity and what was being shown and i feel like people got it in their heads that at screenix that this needed to be a game yeah it's and, such and a like weird it, one it feels like it's a hey we kind of just did the best with what we were working with which is not a lot um it's been around for a little while and i and i i wish it was better um, it just feels that right now it's it's the best Mass Effect character. We've arrived at best Mass Effect character. <laughs> um, Garrus of Carrionville. We're in we're in Fane Town, baby. <laughs> um, yeah, I wish that I could get. There's other things that are in the game, like there's these little dungeons where you just like fight through wave after wave of enemy in different rooms, and then there's an a boss at the end that is always some sort of mixture of animal and element or like weird yeah. creature and element and I wonder where they got that idea from. Ain't it? And it's thoroughly unsatisfying. Yeah. Like I there's I I got and there's so much in the open world that is not fun to do that then you think about what is this game and it is you going from check from art marker to marker to do activities that you probably aren't enjoying. And at yeah, that point, to, to unlock things you're not even enjoying. Like, yeah, cool, yeah. I've got a new necklace. I've got a new necklace, or I've got nails, or I've got. But like, and then you go into like story stuff that it just feels not great. And it kind of like just comes together as this experience that's entirely forgettable. Um, that's the thing, I, I, I don't hate it, I don't love it. I'm, Power yeah. to you if you do love it. It just elicits no reaction from yeah, me. It is, and that yeah. is what. Is, the, is maybe more damning than anything. Yeah, the worst thing then, uh, the only thing worse than a game being like bad and making you angry is a game that you play and just like are completely ambivalent about. And just like, because then you ask yourself, why am I, what am I getting out of this? And it's nothing like, I, you can play an hour of this game and I guarantee you, you will have everything you need to know about it and nothing will change by the end of the game. If you're interested in stories and tantas and that kind of business, great. Mm. Maybe that maybe it's worth sticking it through, but I, I personally, there's nothing in here that makes me 
excited about the way it's being told. I'm I not can. Lie. I, I, balancing I, this in Dead Space was uh, a real oh, yeah. trip for the last yes. week or so. I was so thankful that Dead Space came when came and I started <laughs> playing and I was like, I hope this is good, man. I don't need another one of these like mediocre games and. Who that was good. Uh, I, uh, Mike, the only thing keeping me interested, and I think I'm just going to watch it, is I want to see how far they de go into the Alice in Wonderland thing. Um, yeah. And also, like, I'm pretty sure I know exactly what, how this story is going to end, and I'm not very far into it, because at some point there was, like, someone mentioned, oh, the Tantas aren't allowed to have children. And then I like, yeah, yeah, it's like very early and it's a throwaway yeah. line. And then the entirety of like, uh, perhaps it's a spoiler. So if, if you if you care about this story and don't want to hear it, maybe stop listening for a minute. The entirety of the opening two hours are a constant reminder that Frey was abandoned in some New York street uh, and she's named after in, in the Holland Tunnel. Yeah, which is in, where in a tunnel. Her name came oh, from. oh sure. a lady, a woman who, a girl who's been abandoned in a New York environment, uh, and then uses a, a fucking a portal to go to a different world where the most important women aren't allowed to have children because of their role. Mm. I wonder where that's going. <laughs> oh god, yeah. But like I said, I, that is entirely speculating. Every now and then you come across these towers, and I'm like, okay, cool. What's this tower about? And you go in there, and let me tell you, literally nothing. You walk in, they all look like this tower. Oh, the guild uh, things, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. usually will run to the top of each of these towers. Yeah. Um, empty. Never a person in here. Unless there's a, a story there beat in here. was one character who was, yeah, yeah right was at the in start. one of these. Um, yep, you just oh, keep going little. all the way to the top. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, there we go. Oh, was, oh, wait, is that a bookshelf? Like the yes. one that's in every room that every you single, This exact in. bookshelf, yeah. Any interesting oh books? my god, and, and yeah, this, this is, is how you upgrade you your upgrade magic. Upgrade stuff, so this is... This is like the eight hour in upgrade tree. Uh, this is these bookshelves and the way to do this is in every single one of those refuge um, places where yeah. you sleep and restore your health, by the way. So you just climb this tower for yeah. nothing. Nothing. You, you unlock a, an ability like this um, and it like has the link to the older ones. And then you can also um, like convert it back to mana if you want to redo it. But mm. also you can upgrade them by doing like the attached uh sub objectives on this one so like if you see at the bottom it starts off to tell me i've got a scatter shot level one if i hit square on it it will say um it'll give me like a bunch of tasks to do that'll be like i wonder which one i'm working on here i'm working on that one yeah so i need to defeat 10 enemies that are vulnerable to phrase magic generic as hell so once yeah. i do that it will give me the purple magic up one yeah and plus one up. and boost damage and let me tell you i could not care less about any of that <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I, I've I did been it. doing those just because i like to see those numbers go up i found um, i found one area where it was just endlessly spawning zombies and, oh uh, my God. and and basically just like leveled up most of the spells that i cared about in that moment um just because it was like I, I can just sit here hold these buttons down and yeah. everyone will come to me and slowly die and then when i'm done i'll be very powerful and that's exactly what I did. And once I did that, I was like, okay, my, that, and so ends my interest in growth path for Frey. And honestly- oh, I will say, also, if you play this game, go into the accessibility settings. A, turn the Jewel Shark, uh, Jewel Sense fucking trigger stuff off, cause it's a yeah, pain it's in the annoying. ass. Also change it so you don't have to hit a button to pick things up while you're parkouring. You can change yep. it so she just automatically picks stuff up, uh, which is what you've got on, it's what I've got on. Is I don't understand why that's not on by default. Yeah, let's go into one of these barrier areas before we wrap it up. Um, wrap it up, wrap it in. Wrap it on. Let me begin. This is, and just to be clear, all of them look like this. Um, this yeah. one's this one's red, which is a nice change from the other one. Um, oh. I might have even done this one. I'm not. Yeah, I think I've done this one. So you come through here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. This is how are gen open. how generic yeah. it is. I, d I didn't even realize I did this one. Maybe you come that's why it's these. red. Yeah, you come through these. You over here. You will fight some enemies yeah. that are no challenge whatsoever. Um, and then you just kind of like go up through. The it's always this linear as well. Like it has been for me anyway so far. <laughs> Maybe there is some stuff in the new area. Oh, there's a chest here that I can get. Oh, there you go. Dead end. Oh no, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Dead end. Um, yeah. Goodbye. So you do that. You do that. <laughs> 
uh, and then you go to the end of it and there's usually a boss there and the yeah. bosses are very much bullet spongy yeah. Um, there's not really any trick to it. What are you firing out over your hand? Like, rocks? Yeah. Uh, this is like some oh. weird rock stuff that she seems to be co like mm. gathering from around herself. Um, but it's also very unclear. Like, it's magic rock, basically, I guess. Yeah, and then you get to the end and it's like, uh, do you want to leave now? Nice. Always good in a pinch. Uh, or you can uh, go back to the entrance, which I don't know why. There's also a mechanic that I, I frankly am... Um, miffed by it but you can set up like uh on the fly campfires yes oh i forgot about that because i, so this I is saw the them arena. i saw them do it and i was like I this is the arena that i fought the boss in and um but it's only because when you're down here there's no way to replenish your health so i assume that's the only reason that mechanic yeah. exists i fought a boss in here i could not tell you what the boss was yeah I fought nice. one that was in, like, an uh, icy pond. Oh, yeah, and you had to, like, parkour around the different platforms, yeah. the islands, and it's very annoying because she keeps overshooting her jumps, mm -hmm. which is where the uh, stop, mid-air stop comes into use. Yeah. But anyway, here, listen, listen, everyone. This game is not offensively bad. It's no. just painfully boring. It's mid. It's, Dead it's the very oh. definition of a mid game. It's the kind of uh, open world game that does not work anymore. Um, and sadly, that's the best we can say about it. If you if you find it like one day like cheap, it could be fun as a podcast game where you literally yeah. put it on. Like I've done that. I tuned out and I just run around collecting those weird blue upgrade uh, energy spout things, fountain things, and that's mm. it. Um, and that's pretty much, I, I, I played this for nine or 10 hours, uh, around that time, which is, and I think it's a 15 hour game. Um, yeah. and, uh, I have no I interest in returning so to it. Good. I'm done. Yeah. Um, I'm also done. And I, I put like five in and yeah. then I was like, oh, I got dead space. Though. Yeah. I will be playing Hi-Fi Rush and Dead Space. Oh, fuck yeah. Hi-Fi Rush. <laughs> what a banger. Anyway, banger. Anyways. We'll that talk to you. That was the, the quick first look. spoken. Quick look. We'll talk to you soon. Let us know what you thought of the game. Um, I'm sure you can find us on like Twitter and stuff. I'm Tomo H and Lucy is Lucy James Games. And we'll see Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye.